welcome back and we begin this half hour of the Denver mayoral debate talking about equity and our first question comes from former mayoral candidate Lisa Calderon who placed third in the April election. Nearly half of Denver residents are people of color with the largest share being Latinos at about 34 percent. However, the Hancock and Hickenlooper administrations fell far short of appointing women of color to key leadership positions. Will you, as mayor, appoint women of color to your leadership and transition teams and include my input? Kelly, we'll begin with you. Absolutely, but let me describe the process uh, I wanna go through because it's exciting. I look at those cabinet positions as the most critical decision uh, that I'll make as your mayor. And so I will create stakeholder groups, uh, community coming together to help identify who are the best applicants. And this kind of process works for two reasons. One is by having diverse stakeholders help look at resumes, identify critical issues, we'll get the chance to ensure everyone who applies um, really gets careful consideration. But my experience is it also encourages really diverse applicants and top talent to apply. The second reason I'll do it this way and I'll hire from the top qualified candidates that that stakeholder group recommends is because it also means that we hire someone that our stakeholders, people who care deeply about that job, now are invested in, that there's ownership and together we can begin the work immediately. I think we'll make more progress and have more success. That's what my process will look like. Thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you and thank you, Dr. Calderon for the question. Absolutely, the answer is we will ensure that we have both incredibly diverse transition teams and incredibly diverse leadership teams, including making sure women of color are heavily represented in those moments. Uh, I've had the chance to lead in different roles over the course of my life, starting as a school principal. Uh, I led three different schools around the metro area. And in each of those places, uh, the, one of the most important keys to success is making sure you have diverse leaders around you who have connections to the community, to the kids, to the neighborhood, who have different lived experiences. That always makes a leadership group stronger. Uh, the same was true when I was in the state senate and opened a community office in North Park Hill. We had the chance to be both uh, leading with community and neighbors and also making sure that those community leaders had voices uh, in our policy work. We created a citizen's cabinet, which was made up of all of those neighbors who had experience, lived experience, or expertise on a given topic who could help inform the policies that we chose. Did that as a foundation leader and will absolutely do that as the next mayor is to make sure we have a cabinet that looks like our city and we have a transition team that looks like our city. Thank you both. So continuing the conversation now on equity, Desiree has the next question. This question comes from Servicios de la Raza. How do you intend to increase resources for community-led initiatives by community-based organizations of color? Mike, why don't you begin? Uh, thank you. Yeah, I've been proud to partner with Servicios de la Raza in the past and um, proud to have the support of Nita and Rudy who are working so hard to make that happen there. Uh, what we know is that the city can't solve all these problems on their own. And the only way we get big problems solved is by actually being able to partner with nonprofits who have the most expertise, they're the closest to the problem, and they have the relationships that are able to deliver really transformational results in our neighborhoods. So the way I would approach it is to say, what's the big problem we're trying to solve? Whether that's homelessness, whether that's mental health support, whether that's affordable housing, and then who are the community leaders that are closest to that problem? Who are the ones that have real insight into what's working and what's not? How do we get them at the table to help us design the solution? and then have them at the table to help us decide how to deliver the services and the programs that people need and how to make sure we can put the best programs and the best people uh, connected to those services so that we know sure that we know people are getting uh, services from community members they know and trust that are delivering real results uh, on the taxpayer dollars that we're using. Thank you, Kelly. I will absolutely engage our community uh, and our diverse community partners in this work. And I'll give you an example of how I've done it in my history. Uh, when I was CEO of the Chamber of Commerce in 2018, we set out uh, to address the inequities we saw in our economy around race and gender. And what we did is engage exactly these community partners to identify the most critical issues, but more importantly, the strategies and the approaches to remove barriers so we could address home ownership in our region and address the fact that people of color are less likely to own a home, to address the income inequities that we see for gender and race and to address um, uh, even uh, educational uh, attainment. When we did it, the work that way, what we found uh, is our community partners could identify the barriers and we were way more successful at removing those barriers and addressing the issue. I'd do the same thing as your mayor, partner with our community so we can get the issues right and get the strategies right and make progress. 